I'm Andy. I'm at yeah, the NYU Center for Data Science. You might know me from doing stuff at Scikit-Learn. I'll talk about PyStruct and structure prediction in Python. So if you sit here, you consent to being shown a lot of formulas. Sorry about that. So this is a technique for doing things like sequence prediction without a lot of data. So basically, structure prediction is a generalization of classification or other supervised learning techniques in which you don't want to predict a single outcome, but um, I'm mostly interested in predicting a vector of outcomes. So your class label Y is a tuple of uh, multiple labels, and the length of this tuple can vary per sample. So why are we interested in this? So I want to go to a couple of uh, sample applications. The most simple that I can think of is multi-label classification. Think about having a couple of news stories, and you want to classify in a supervised setting um, which topics the, uh, a news story belongs to, like politics, sport, finance, domestic, religion. These are not exclusive classes, as in multi-class classification. Each news story could touch upon multiple, multiple of these topics, and you want to decide um, which are relevant. Or say you have some uh, a customer base, and you want to predict for each customer some attributes. Do they uh, own a car, do they smoke, are they married, self-employed, or have kids? And again, these are not exclusive classes. Multiple of these um, could apply to one of your users. There are two uh, ways you could try to approach this problem using standard classification. You could either uh, say, well, these are a lot of binary problems. For news story one, I can think of, it could be about politics or not about politics. I'll train a binary classifier. Then another one for sports, and another one for finance. You could definitely do that. However, you would um, miss all the correlations that might be between these classes. So it's very unlikely that something is both about um, sports and about religion. And uh, uh, if you could model these uh, more jointly, these decisions, you might be able to do better. The other extreme would be saying, well, um, I have five zeros or ones. I can look at each of the possible combinations as a single class. But then there's very many classes. And if I have, say, 10 topics, I have um, two to the 10 possible uh, classes. And I would need a lot of data to do this multi-class classification. Also, you could only predict combinations that you saw in the training data. So we want to do some in-between thing that allows us to model correlations between the output classes but, not, but still be able to learn this from like a small enough sample data set. Another application is uh, sequence tagging. This could, is often used in text or for maybe for video. Oh, sorry, this is a bit dark. So these are some uh, frames from a YouTube video. And let's say you want to predict the actions that are visible in this YouTube video. So even though it's dark, maybe you believe me that uh, the first one is a uh, woman stroking a cat, stroking a cat, stroking a cat, opening a trash can, and putting the cat in a trash can. So um, basically, for each um, action you want to do multi-class classification, uh, for each frame you want to do multi-class classification problem, you want to say, what uh, is the person doing in this video frame? Again, you could do this independently for each video frame, but then, again, there's some correlation between these consecutive frames. As a person is, is stroking a cat, they're very likely to keep stroking the cat. So, um, you might want to um, kind of model the continuity here. And mo uh, models like hidden Markov models or conditional random fields are models that kind of fall broadly under structure prediction that try to solve this kind of problem. The setting that uh, I come from is semantic image segmentation, and this is actually what I wrote PyStruct for. Here, imagine you have uh, a photograph like the one on the left here, and you want to assign to each pixel a semantic class label saying, um, what kind of object that is, does this belong to? You see a different coloring for the pixels for person, for cat, for table, and bottle. And so again, you could try this, uh, to treat this as a multi-class problem, like uh, use one classifier per pixel. But here are very strong correlations between um, neighboring pixels. A person is not only a pixel large. Also, there's correlations between classes. Here, you expect the bottle to be on the table, not below it. So okay, hopefully I've convinced you um, that there, for a lot of uh, domains, there's a lot of structure in the output space and modeling things together that kind of belong together makes sense. So now there's gonna be some math here, sorry. 
So the essence of structure prediction here is the like, most general formulation you could come up with is you want to learn a function f that gets some input features x um, and some learned parameters w and this f computes some prediction y. And the way you do this is you um, get a compatibility function g that says how good is this possible labeling y fit together with my data x. So let's say x is the image and y is the possible labeling. And you try to find the y that explains uh, the pixels best, given some learned parameters w. And then you pick the labeling that fits best the data. So what's crucial here is that this, uh, the possible outputs y are usually a very large space. So all possible labelings of the, pixel, uh, uh, of the pixels in an image, or all possible labelings of a sequence, or all possible combinations of the topics for a newspaper. So you can, it's impossible to enumerate all of these and try out all possible y. If you uh, like, you can think of this as doing maximum likelihood prediction. So you can think of having a, a probability distribution over your possible output labels and pre predict the best, the best one. I don't like to do this because it's very hard to normalize uh, these if y is large. All right, there's two more slides with formulas. Then we're good. Um, so as I said, my y are usually two, um, tuples, so they're like sequences of labels, like for a uh, sequence prediction, or you can also flatten your image labels out as sort of having one label per pixel. And so the models that I implement in uh, PyStruct and that I want to focus on are the ones where this uh, compatibility function is a linear function of the parameters you learn w and um, of some parameter vector uh, th uh, psi of x and possible label y. So that's the first restriction. I want to, um, it to be linear in the parameters I learn. The second restriction is um, I want it to decompose as a sum of terms that only include um, a single output y, so let's say a single video frame or a single um, topic and pairs of video frames or topics. So, it's, so that's the second term. And so I want it to decompose. So I don't want um, the compatibility function to look at all video frames at once. I can look at single ones and at, at uh, pairs. And once I do this, then sort of, I have some hope of computing this maximum, even if my um, output space is exponentially large. So, one example of a model that looks like that works like this is a hidden Markov model or a conditional random field, where these round nodes are uh, kind of the y's that you want to observe, and these square nodes are. Uh, correspond to these, um, what we call unary and pairwise potentials. So the, the parts that uh, um, work on one of the uh, y's and the parts that work on a two of the y's. Okay, so now how does this work in code? So the architecture of PyStruct um, works the following. It kind of tries to be similar to scikit-learn, but it's slightly more complicated. So to get an estimator object, like you would have like a logistic regression or an SVM or something in scikit-learn, you need to combine three things. One is the learner, the thing that uh, learns from the data and gives you a W. One is the model that um, constructs this graph and says like, which things are those that belong together? Or is this a multi-label problem, a sequence labeling problem, and so on. And the last one is the uh, part that computes this argmax. So the learner finds a W, the model is kind of says how does this uh, psi work, and the inference does, says how do I compute the argmax. And so this is the way look, this looks in code. So the model is, um, there's classes in uh, PyStruct that gives you all kinds of different models. So for example, if I have a chain model, I want to do sequence prediction, I take a chain CRF, then the inference I want to use, I can just pass it a string. There's like a lot of built-in things, like max product that you might know it as vertebrae or, or uh, something like that, or belief propagation. So they're all kind of the same thing. And then you have the learner, which is here, the one select structured SVM. And there's also a bunch of classes. So these are the three things you have to kind of uh, combine to get a model out. And you have to tell the learner, this is the model I want to use. And then I set some parameters. And then, once you did that, call fit, training data, training labels, and you're done. Here, why train is usually, as I said, um, it's, it's a list of tuples, so because each, each data point has uh, multiple outputs. Here's a uh, sample application um, that you can find on the website on doing OCR. 
it's a slightly weird data set because it's handwritten, digit, uh, handwritten in words where the first letter is dropped for some reason, don't ask me why, and this is a classical data set. So this says cafeteria, embraces, spoiling, and cafeteria again. And the idea is to like recognize all these letters. And so here in green in top, uh, you can probably see is the correct answer. In, uh, sorry. in uh, blue is if you do only logistic regression models, so you try to model each digit, in, uh, each letter individually. And in red is what happens if you do a sequence model. And to train a sequence model and do the prediction, this is exactly what it looks like. And you can see, for example, um, uh, here that um, the model learned that ING is something that happens very uh, frequently in the English language. And so even though this maybe look like, looks like an M, the model is able to recognize this as an N because it's between an I and an G. And IMG is much more unlikely. You can introspect the parameters, uh, parameters and see what happens. Um, this is like a pairwise compatibility between two neighboring letters that were learned. And so you can see that an I is often followed by an N and an uh, L is often followed by a Y, um, at least for the uh, in English words in this data set. So this is kind of, at least for se uh, sequence prediction, this is pretty straightforward to use. But um, so if your model is like a sequence, everything's easy, you can use dynamic programming. Um, this is not really the use case that PyStruck was done for. If you also, if your model is something like trees, um, it also, like the structure in your label space are trees, it's also very easy. It's also not, you can do this with uh, PyStruck very easily. I'm not sure if there's another library that you can do this easily with, but it's also still not a use case PyStruck is for. PyStruct is really for grid models, like in the image, where um, basically each pixel is connected to its four or eight uh, surrounding pixels, and uh, there's a lot of loops in this graph, and that makes everything hard. This makes like the math go bad. Um, however, you can still uh, solve this, and there's a couple of approximate uh, solvers in, uh, in PyStruct that can help you do this. Um, Here's an example of doing something on grids. It's a toy example from a paper, but I really like it um, because it tells you that structure prediction is really useful. And this is, okay, but let me explain the task. So this is basically a person playing uh, the snake game that you might remember from 10 years ago on your Nokia. So here, this is the input. This is sort of which, but which number the person pressed. Green means going down, yellow means going to the right, red means going up, Yellow means going to the right, blue means going to the left. And so here I want to train a model uh, to infer from this input, like which direction did it go here locally, what is the, where's the head and where's the tail of the snake. So here there's, this is the uh, head and this is the tail and the snake goes like this. And so uh, the data set, sort of if a human looks at it, it's immediately clear what happens and you can like work it out yourself. Um, there's like 200 examples in this, and so you could probably solve this with a neural net too, but it would need like 200,000 examples, maybe. <laughs> um, but you can do this very easily with structure prediction, where you want to label each of the points as either being background or like each, the snakes are always 10 long, uh, give them labels from uh, 1 to 10. And this looks like something, something like this. So I give it these, um, these input images, and um, the ground truth, and then I have to also specify so this is a grid graph. This is kind of uh, hidden in this X where I define a graph structure, and then I can learn this. So, and this is the outcome. Um, so if you try to do this, just doing it, doing it locally um, without taking correlations into account, then you cannot do, solve this problem. It's basically, locally, it's impossible to, dis, to disambiguate. You need to have the information from where's the head and where's the tail to propagate down. But if you have this information, then you can solve this problem. All right, so um, for those people who maybe have some background, there's like, this is a lot of the algorithms that are implemented. So as I said, you need, always need to combine a learner model and inference. 
Um, there's like, mostly I'm focusing on structured SVMs, structured prediction, latent variable SVMs uh, for the learners. Models are things for uh, grids and chains and multi-label. And there's a couple of inference algorithms that do this ArcMax for you. Um, and there's um, also uh, interfaces to external libraries. Yeah, maybe I'll skip this and just tell you, um, go to uh, pystruck.github.io. There's a lot of examples. Uh, I more or less recently added a user guide that tells you in detail how these different models work how, um, and what to use in which situation. And so uh, that's it for me. And I'm happy to take any questions. So there's, oh yeah, sorry, question. So you say if you have an arbitrary model, uh, can you do inference in it? And um, it's mostly restricted to pairwise models. So if you have higher order energies, it's not that easy. Also, this mostly focuses on par uh, parameter learning. So um, this will, you can use it just to do inference, but it's mostly, it'll help you learn the parameters of your model. Questions, how many labels do I typically have? Do you mean how many examples or how many, like? The number of Ys, okay. Um, so it depends. So if you wanna, usually I don't work, I use an, uh, to work on images, but I usually don't work on the pixels directly, if you would work on a pixels directly, it would be like tens of thousands, but I usually work on aggregated things, so I have like a, thou a thousand of uh, output things per image. Is that time? There are more questions. Okay. All right.